geez, you know, I really love your company, but you gotta give me a little notice instead of keep sneaking up on me like this. Whew. Anyway, I am just here getting ready to go grocery shopping. I thought I would do a day in the life with you. And I'm going to take you grocery shopping. Now, I don't know if I'll be filming inside the store, but I'm gonna let you know what I'm shopping for. I'm gonna be making some summer foods and things for Father's Day. So one thing I'm gonna be making is my own version of bourbon steak tips. And I have no idea how it happened, but I keep getting notice from Google that it's one of the top visited recipes. So I haven't made it since 2018. I created it for Father's Day. I posted it on my blog and I haven't made it since. So I'm gonna see what all the hoopla is about and see if I like my recipe again. I will absolutely be linking my website recipe below and I'm going to share the ingredients maybe before this video even comes live here on YouTube and then we can make it together possibly. I'm also gonna be making, it's Ina Garten's um, mac and cheese with Gruyere cheese, if I'm saying that correctly. And I'm making that for my father-in-law. He has requested a mac and cheese that my mother-in-law used to make. I don't have the recipe, but that's the, this is the best I can do because I know this is really delicious. But her recipe also had stewed tomatoes and hot dogs. I've never made that before, but I'm going to modify this one. It has some sliced tomatoes on top and I will sprinkle in some hot dogs for my father-in-law for sure. I'm making that and then I'm going to make a no churn ice cream. I'm going to be making my mother's cucumber sandwiches that are perfect for a summer party or a tea party. And then I'm also going to be making my watermelon feta mint salad just for little quick appetizers. So I've got my list going here. I'm just finishing it up. I'm also gonna need things like one gallon zip bags to put the, the marinating steak tips in and freezer containers for the ice cream. I've never made that before. So this ice cream recipe called for using dried lavender. I have plenty of it from my garden dried in the cabinet, but I think I'm gonna try maybe a version of that and see if I like it. And I might even try finding like little mini chocolate chips or little mini butterscotch chips and do a second recipe of that just to see if we like it. Not all of these recipes I'll be sharing, I don't think in this particular video, but who knows, we'll see. And the little cucumber sandwiches, those are really for a party, but I think I'm still gonna make them to show you. And then I'll have them to nibble on for the next couple days because they are that good. All right, so let me finish this up and then we're gonna head out. I'm gonna go to the grocery store. I also have to go to the liquor store to buy some bourbon and then we'll come back home and I will start working here in the kitchen and we will do some things together. All right, so let's go hit the road and I'm gonna go shopping.
Well, I'm back from shopping and it took me at first a lot longer than I thought, only because I ended up doing a full grocery shopping. Actually, I'm gonna move my microphone now that I've got my, excuse me here, guys. There we go, that, that's right there, that should be better. Um, I ended up doing a full grocery shopping. I figured I'd rather not go out again. I'll probably forget something anyways, but I'm trying to do some shopping every other day at local farm stands and the butcher. So I'm trying to eat healthier with, with Ben's. But right now I thought, I know I said I was going to make the watermelon feta mint and also the cucumber sandwiches. I still am, but I think I'm going to put the, the steak tips together first because I want them to marinate as long as possible. It will help get the, tenderize the meat the longer that they are. Um, so I'm going to cut these up right now. I've got my computer next to me so I can just look at my, my measurements. But I'm going to do two bags of these steak tips. And I can usually cut them on my cutting board, but right now I'm going to use some of my kitchen scissors. I just sharpened them, hoping they're going to be good enough to do this. And I'm going to try to cut these in the exact same sizes so that they cook at the same rate. I'm going to make them good size so they can go on the grill. They're not going to fall through. So I'm just going to take the time here and I'm going to cut through these. And then I'm going to do two bags. I'm going to separate this. And then we'll make up the glazing sauce for it. All right, this is going to, I'm going to do that for one bag. And I might add... I might add more after. Lovely. I'm kind of a germaphobe, if you can't tell the way I'm doing this. So um, I do not like touching raw meats. Like when it comes to making burgers, the boys all laugh at me. Um, I kind of ask them to do it. If I have to, I'll put my big girl pants on and, and touch the raw meat. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. So you may already know this looking for marbleizing versus a lot of fat within one section of the meat. Meat itself is fairly flavorless and it's the fat that gives you all that wonderful flavor. Cooking a piece of meat that's marbleized, you have that flavor that's dispersed all throughout the meat. But if you're cooking something that has just like big chunks of fat here and there, you're gonna get some that's flavorful and some that's not. And that's why if you can look for a cut that has nice marbling in it, you can pretty much be sure that you're going to get consistent flavor for your meats. All right, I'm back. So my recipe calls for three and a half to four pounds of, of the meat. Now I created this recipe in 2018 when I knew I'd be feeding hungry men and I wanted to make sure I had enough steak tips. So I have I did ask for four pounds here of the meat. And I'm just gonna roll this down so I can pour my mixture in after easily. And I'm just gonna pull up my recipe, which is, I think I mentioned it earlier today before I head out, headed out to the grocery store. And mind me, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm having a hot flash here right now. Whew, it's, I don't think clearly. My thoughts just go poof. So I'm gonna pull up my, my recipe here. Quarter cup of Worcestershire. And if you do a little bit extra here and there, you know, it's not going to make a huge difference. A quarter cup of soy sauce. All right, so two tablespoons balsamic vinegar. So we have one, two, and then a quarter cup of honey. I'm just going to give this a stir, incorporate that honey, and then I have a quarter teaspoon of salt. I really want to get that honey mixed together so I don't just have big, a big clump in the bag because I'm going to be pouring this into both the bags. I could have warmed it up a little bit. If your honey gets uh, really odd looking and crusty, you can put it in the microwave. It uh, doesn't go bad if you do that. So just Give it a little 
just a few seconds each time and see how it goes. Okay, here we go. It's already almost melted. Quarter teaspoon. I usually use just my hand to figure it out, but I'll do it this way for video purposes. Once again, I'm also want the salt to dissolve, and I might even add a little extra salt just to help tenderize it a little bit more. But um, I'm also going to grab something else. Bear with me. We are not going to use all of this bourbon, but the reason I do have these different bourbons. There's several reasons. One, I did want to have one for this recipe. And this Woodford Reserve, I, I like drinking this myself on ice. And I have this in the decanter in the sitting room. But when I was talking to somebody at the liquor store, we were talking about bourbons and scotch, you know, the same but different areas in the whole works. And I'm going to go over that another time with you. But he mentioned that this Maker's Mark whiskey has a little more caramel and vanilla flavoring to it. So I figured I'm going to get this one was for us to have in the decanter. But he also suggested this for future for when we're having parties and events. I guess it's an up and coming bourbon. And I just wanted to compare it because uh, I didn't even look at the cost comparison. How awful is that? I should have. But we're going to be trying that out. But today for the recipe, I'm going to try the Maker's Mark. You can use any whiskey, any scotch that you would like. We'll go put these aside and I was saying in my recipe to use two nips now here in Massachusetts I don't know if any place else in the country uses this word or not but this is what we call nips the tiny little bottles but if you don't you can just buy those so you don't have to go and get the large container I twisted my own arm to get this but you could also use a shot glass or you could do about a quarter cup. It um, let's figure this out with the two, the two shot glasses. And since I'm going on the higher side with the meat, I could probably up my ingredients a little bit, but this is all on preference. Like I said, I made this recipe the first time and I haven't modified it since, so very sticky. Now, I don't know if it's a screw off or a pop up. Oh, it's a screw top. That is very cool. Back to this. Let's just see what two shots measures out to. So if you don't have a shot glass, we'll just figure that out for you. That's what I was thinking. It looks like it's going to be about a quarter cup. Yes, quarter cup of bourbon. How much easier is that? I'll try. All right. Let's do this little taste test. Let's see. It smells very similar to the Woodford. It does have a little different flavor. I'm gonna to have to do a taste test. And that's the reason I got three. Um, I wanted to do a taste test with Ben. It has a lot more heat or warmth, I should say, to, you know, going down. I'm gonna have to compare. It smells really nice. I like mine on, on ice, on the rocks. I'm gonna add a little, you know what, I'm just gonna add a little more salt. Salt brings out some of the sweetness, so it will help tenderize the meat. I'm just gonna do another quarter tablespoon. <clears throat> Whew, feeling the warmth from that bourbon now. I'm not sure if you've seen some of my cocktail posts in the past. I used to make cocktails a lot when I did uh, corporate parties for my clients. A part of my service was coming up with and creating a signature cocktail. So I do have a few here on YouTube. I still have quite a few in my recipe file that I haven't shared yet. And there's quite a few I want to um, share with you. Back here, I have a jalapeno. I'm going to be doing spicy margaritas. And I want to compare infusing this with the tequila versus using, I'm going to walk off again. Mm. 
versus maybe cheating and using some of the liquid that's in the jalapeno pepper jar. So twisting my arm again to do a, a cocktail taste test. All right, so now I'm just gonna take these and I'm going to pour my liquid in. Let's see here. So I got a cup here. I'm gonna do a half cup each. A little bit more. So some of you follow me on Instagram and I think you may have seen the fabric that my client selected that um, put together for the English country library in their antique farmhouse. And I'm very excited to see how this project goes. So I will be showing some here on YouTube. The, the owner is very open to, um, to me showing some of the things that we have going on there. I just wanted to get into the process a little bit more, make sure she liked what I was going to show and make sure her husband liked it. So yeah, if you go over on Instagram, you will see the fabric selection for that. I found a fabric that had all of the colors that was on their wish list. And I'll show you also um, at one point the questionnaire that I give to my clients for design projects. And it just really helps focus in and helps me understand what they like. Sometimes the homeowner doesn't even know what they like. You know, it kind of helps figure things out. So I'm going to, I'm just going to get rid of the air here in this. So these are going to now sit for days, but I'm going to keep turning them, massaging them, giving them some love, and really work the marinade into each and every piece. Now, for potential uh-oh purposes, I always put marinating meats or anything in a bag, actually, into a second container in the fridge just in case there's a little leak. Don't want to have any mistakes. All right. So those are going to marinate now until Sunday afternoon, Father's Day. And like I said, I'm going to go back and massage them and give them some love and flip them over um, each day just to get the marinade. Because when they're done at stores, they're touched and handled a lot. So. We want to make sure we get everything in there. All right, so that's going to go off to the side and go into my fridge. to be making some of these cucumber sandwiches that are perfect for a party, uh, a little gathering. They're full of flavor. They're, I would say, two bite little mini sandwiches. They're, there's just bread on the bottom, not on the top. And they're very simple to serve. And they, sometimes people see them, they're like, what are those? But as soon as they take one bite, they're usually back for more and more. Trust me, they're, they're so delicious. And it's just a few ingredients. I use the Italian season mix that I picked up at the grocery store. I have a container of cream cheese. This is the 12 ounce. And I left this out quite a while so that it's nice and soft because we're gonna be mixing the two together. So you wanna make sure that it's easier to mix. All right, so I'm gonna take this out and it's nice and soft, perfect. Now don't get rid of this container because once we mix it together, I like to make these ahead of time, or at least the cream cheese ahead of time because the flavors will really soak into the cream cheese. So I would not leave this to the, the morning of. I would make the cream cheese, maybe let it sit a day, then take it out, let it get nice and creamy again, and then you can put the sandwiches together. So all I'm doing is one packet of the Italian salad dressing mix, and this is uh, Good Seasons, but I'm guessing you can find another brand or put together your own herbs. It's Italian dressing mix. All right, I'm just gonna mix this together. 
And boy, just having the mixture softened makes a difference. I'm going to make a couple of the sandwiches for you right now, but then I'm gonna put the rest away in the fridge and then I can make them here and there if I'd like. So let me show you what I like to use is party rye bread. And this you could use also pumpernickel, but I just love the small size of this. And sometimes it's really hard to find. They sell out a lot of times. So this has been in my freezer since last fall. I bought it when I found it and I have a couple more in the freezer. I'm hoping it doesn't have a freezer flavor to it, but I did have it in a bag. So here's hoping. Okay. So like I said, just through the magic of pretending that that was in the fridge for a day. Here we go. This is tough. Usually I like to have everything plated out, but right now I didn't. So what I have for this recipe is the good seasons, the cream cheese, some dill, and then I'm gonna take out the party rye. Normally I would have this all set up in kind of like a, a station just to do one after the other. fine. Very fine. I got myself a cucumber and I washed it to get the wax off that they put on some of the cucumbers. And I'm going to do a little technique. It's probably done, but um, I've been doing it ever since. So what I like to do is peel my cucumber, then score it nice and deep because you're trying to make it like a ruffled edge. And I'll save the other half of the cucumber for tomorrow. Watch your eyes. At least it's not an onion. And then I'm going to just give it a little cut. And it gives it a little ruffled edge. I did my my fork marks really close, but you could separate them. You could use a whole different um, tine of fork. Let me come over here to the camera to see if I can show you a close up. These are definitely bringing back some really fun childhood memories. I remember one year, um, it was as simple of a party as we knew there was going to be a wedding across the street from our home in the field. And you know, my, my mother and myself, my sister and our neighbors, we just wanted to watch from afar. So this is one of the things my mother put together. We sat out on the porch having these little sandwiches and most likely iced tea or lemonade. And um, like I said, every, every summer, almost every party, my mother served these or was asked to, to bring them. You know, I, for, for serving them at a party, I like to make them hours before the party because the cucumber will make the bread and everything a little soggy after a while. For me, the next day in the fridge, I love to take them out and I prefer them that way. They have a little crunch them still, the bread is moist, a little simple pleasure for me. All right, I'm just gonna make one more here. So I'll be able to have a couple tonight as a treat. I'm going to put the rest away for tomorrow and then I have another half of cucumber. This mixture is going to go back into the container and this should do almost a whole packet of the bread. Um, you know, you just don't want to be too stingy, but you don't want to get too, too much on there. And then I'm just going to finish it off with a little dill.
Well, kindred spirits, I am going to take a break right now, as I said, and I wanna thank you so much for watching this video today. And I'm gonna do the other recipes at another time, but I wanted to make sure I got these two up for you in case you're doing something on the weekend that's special. If not, these are great for any time of the year. It doesn't even have to be summer. It's just that you know, you've know you got the cucumbers that are coming out fresh in the gardens and you're grilling outside a little bit more. I just wanted to get this loaded for you to enjoy. Thank you again for watching my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked this. My hopes are to help you find your own version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be, no matter where you live. Bye now.